Before I start this video, I wanted to mention that on my vlog channel, Everyday Mary, I put up a video yesterday of my dad who created his own hydroelectric power plant using mostly parts from scrap metal and stuff. If you're interested in seeing anything like that, um, I did post a video yesterday about his hydroelectric uh, generator on my other channel if you want to check it out. Hello. It's good to see you. Today, we're going to talk about reaching goals, uh, particularly referring to money. Now, this is just for entertainment purposes only. This is not meant to be financial advice or any other kind of advice. Please do remember, as I always say, I am just a goober on the internet, okay? Don't base major life decisions on my opinions or beliefs or anything like that. It is just for entertainment purposes only. These are just my opinions. And you know what they say about opinions? We all have them. <laughs> um, but I've had several people contact me. You know, I, I do these uh, videos from time to time, and I, I call them Mama Mary's Lectures because I am a good bit older than a lot of y'all. I turned 50 this year. And sometimes younger people will ask me for advice on stuff. What would you do? How would I, how should I handle this? Stuff like that. And I had uh, a message. I got an email from somebody a couple of days ago who said, you know, I'm really in a tough spot uh, financially. I'm in a bind right now. Can you please do a video on money management? And I have before, I've talked about it before, um, but I'll, I'll talk about it again. And this will just be sort of a stream of consciousness thing. Unfortunately, I don't have my little signs, my little papers to hold up that I normally do. This was kind of a spur of the moment thing. I didn't plan to do this, but ever since I got that email, I've been thinking about it. I've thought about it all day and I thought I would just sit down with y'all for a minute and just talk about money management because I really think for a lot of us, probably just about all of us, just in my opinion, in the next few years, I think um, financially times are going to get tough for a lot of people. They already are. I mean, I, I know a lot of people personally who have had to make major life changes because of finances. Um, personally, I'm kind of going through that with the whole uh, YouTube, the Google AdSense thing. They cut my ad revenue by about 75% because they said I had invalid traffic on my channel. Long story short, I appealed it six weeks ago, almost seven weeks ago now, and have received no response at all. So I had to make a choice. And also during that time, my day job went away as well because I've worked as a patent paralegal for 16 years as my day job. That went away. Uh, literally just these things happened like within the span of a week, both of these things happened. And so I had to make a pretty big decision. And I think a lot of people are going to be faced with this decision. I think there's going to be a lot of job loss. Um, you know, the cost of everything keeps going up. You know, your income may go down. So you have to really reevaluate the way you do things. And that's going to be easier for some people than others for a number of reasons. And one of the main reasons is that if you, if you grew up, and, and I was very fortunate in this way, that I grew up in a home where my parents took the time to teach me about money management, saving your money, being patient, budgeting your money, knowing how to balance your checkbook, know how much money you have coming in and going out, just to understand the basics of your household economy. And I learned about that from the time I was little. You know, I would work and have chores. My brother and I both did. And they kind of just increased as we got older, but they would pay us a little more too, you know, if we were doing harder stuff. And we learned if you want anything, you're going to have to save up for it. And if you have to pay for it yourself, it's a simple concept, but a lot of kids never learn this. If you have to pay for it yourself, you kind of rethink how much you, do you really want that thing? Do you want it bad enough to work and save the money to pay for it? And a lot of kids don't ever get to experience that. And I hated it at the, chi at the time as a child. I'm so glad now my parents did that. They didn't just buy me stuff. I mean, they really couldn't. We were, we were not, you know, the poorest of the poor, but we were, we were not well off when I was growing up. We, we didn't, my parents didn't have a lot of money. We, we didn't live an extravagant lifestyle at all. Um, but they have both told me, you know, even if we had had the money, we wouldn't have bought you everything you wanted, not even close, because we wanted you to learn to work and pay for things you want. 
And so that's how I grew up. And that's, to me, that's like my default lifestyle. I don't really have a hard time looking over my budget and cutting stuff out if needed. Um, it's, but for a lot of people, they never learned how to do that. And it's almost, it's like a lot of things. I think if you didn't learn it when you were little, it is so much harder to learn it when you're an adult because you already have all these ingrained behaviors and patterns and, you know, you, you have all this already that you've had for 20, 30, 40 years or more. And it's very hard to break that habit of, you know, I want it, I'm going to go buy it, I'll worry about paying for it later. And that's how a lot of people are. I want a new car. I, I, I know I can't afford it, but I don't care. I'm going to go get it and I will just worry about the consequences later. Um, I don't know in the coming years that that's going to be a wise thing to do. And again, this is not financial advice. I'm just a goober on the internet talking to you. But this one person, this one person really is struggling financially and they didn't go into detail about exactly what was going on or how they got there. I'm not saying that you should never buy something for yourself. I'm not saying that because I think a lot of people want to take it too far. And my own grandfather was like that. Now, my grandparents were young adults during the Depression. They Well, they were in their early 20s during going through the Depression. Um, and they were already married and had a couple of kids. And so I think people who went through the Depression, it, it really changed the way they look at money. And he was very tight-fisted with his money. He wouldn't, he didn't want to spend money on anything at, to, just to an extreme degree because he was so, he was so afraid of being without money. He didn't want to ever have to go through that again, you know, and it's, it's, it was a rough time for everybody, for most people anyway. Um, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about money management. Um, okay. I would say if you are struggling financially, the first thing you need to do, and I know it's a pain and you, you probably don't want to do it. It's not fun. The first thing you need to do is sit down with a piece of paper and a pen and write out. And for me, it helps to write it out. Don't tittle, tittle, tittle and put it on a computer. Don't just tippity tap and put it on your phone. Get a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen and sit there and write it down on a piece of paper. And then you can put this wherever you can see it. You could stick it on a mirror, on your refrigerator or whatever. I don't want it in electronic form. I want it in hard, like a hard copy piece of paper. And I want you to write down every expense you have. You can have monthly expenses. How much do I spend on this a month? If you have an expense that's only every three months, you know, you can put, you can divide it by three or whatever. Just have like every month I have to pay this. And I know for me, I have to pay my car insurance every six months. So, you know, divide that accordingly. And well, every month is this much. Every single expense. Try to figure out about how much you spend on groceries and gas. If you have to put gas in your car, if you have a car, car expenses, um, whatever it is, all of your household expenses, write them all down and take a good hard look at that list. If you have subscriptions like Netflix or Hulu or whatever, put all that in there, gym membership, everything. And you can go through bank statements or whatever to determine what all needs to go on here. Take a really good look at that list. Um, how much are you spending going out to eat? How much are you spending in the drive through at a fast food restaurant? How much are you spending for your lunch every day or your breakfast if you get them on the way to work? You need to put all that in there. You need to put, okay, here's how much I spend on fast food and restaurants every month. And I think a lot of people would be shocked to see how much it is. Um, because I, I see it all the time myself. I mean, the, the restaurants here, I live in a moderate sized city. The restaurants here are always packed. You know, the drive the drive through lines are full of people. Um, I know it's not cheap to eat like that. And again, I'm not saying don't ever do it. I'm not saying that because you can. I do. It's rare, but I do. Um, you're going to have to start trying to determine what in your budget you need and what in your budget you don't need. I mean, if, if, you, if you have a lot of debt and you're trying to pay off your debt, 
One of the first things you can do to pay off your debt faster is to eliminate things from your budget that you don't need to have in there. Whatever that is for you. And again, I'm not judging you. I'm not, I'm not, you don't have to get defensive or anything. I'm not judging anyone. Um, because I know there were a few things, because I recently did that. I sat down with a piece of paper and I wrote out all my expenses. And there were several things in there that I removed that were just ridiculous. Like, I don't need, I don't need these. These things can come out. So it, you know, it helps save some money, especially until I start my new job. Now I have mentioned before, I want to mention again, I start a new job. I have a new full-time job that I'm starting May 1st. So it's a week from tomorrow and I will not be putting out as many videos after that because I'm just not, especially learning a whole new job because it's not like what I've been doing is something uh, quite different. So I'm going to have to go through a period of learning how to do my new job. So I'm probably not going to be in the mood to make videos like I have been. So it will affect my video output going forward. But uh, so once I start my new job, I can breathe a little easier. You know, like financially speaking, I'll, I will be better off. So, okay, that was good. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's hard if you, because see, I, I can't look at things the way you might if you didn't grow up learning how to budget your money fortunately i don't know what that's like because to me living below my means has always been my default setting like i i you know when i bought this house i bought this house in 2017 so we've been here almost six years um it'll be six years this summer i could have borrowed twice as much i could have had a house twice as nice as this but you know, I, I qualified for a much larger mortgage if I'd wanted it, but what for? And that's how I look at a lot of things in my own life. What for? I mean, you know, wow, that's a that's a nice car. Yeah, that is nice, but I wouldn't want one. Oh, you wouldn't want a car like that? Mm-mm, no. Property tax, you got to pay taxes on that car every year. The maintenance is going to be high on it. If you have to repair anything on it, it's going to cost you a fortune. You probably need premium gas or whatever. You're going to pay a premium for everything for this car. I'm not interested in that. And around here, fancy cars and fancy vehicles are a dime a dozen. They're not going to stand out. If you're trying to impress anyone, no one is going to be impressed. Nobody is going to look twice at it. I think one of the most important things you can do from... From the very beginning, first of all, write down all of your expenses. You need to see what your budget looks like on paper. You need to force yourself to look at it. You may not want to think about it, but you have to. I think that's one of the first things you need to do. Another thing you need to do sooner rather than later is to try to figure out why. Okay, so if, if your problem is spending, like say say the problem for you is mainly spending, like I I. I I buy things. You know, I love to go buy stuff. I love to go shopping. And a lot of people do. And again, I'm not judging anybody. I'm not. You need to figure out what is it about shopping? What does that do for you? Like what motivates you to do that? What do you find so rewarding about it? You need to really look at the core motivations that you have. Like maybe, you know, and I knew somebody like this growing up, maybe that feels like love to you. Maybe that feels like love and happiness. I had a friend when I was in school whose parents were divorced and her parents were pretty well off and she lived with her mom and her dad hardly ever saw her because he, he was just always busy with whatever. So he would buy her expensive things and send her very expensive, nice gifts. Um, sort of in in lieu of a visit, he would send her like a pretty necklace or a new coat or, you know, something very nice. So that to her sort of became, that was like love to her, you know. So she sort of started to associate that with her dad and, you know, he, I love you so much, you know, here's a new pair of shoes and these are the ones you wanted, right? Well, here they are, you know, and that that can represent a feeling for you. And you may not even be aware of it as an adult, but a lot of times our experiences as children can affect the way we see things in the future as adults. I mean, that's, you know, pretty elementary, but it's easy to forget that sometimes 
your motivation for doing things may not be readily apparent, but they still motivate you just the same. Like, you know, maybe you have a, a weakness for the clearance rack in a department store. I got to go look at that. I got to go look. You know, we evolved to be hunters and gatherers. That's what that's what we did. We hunted and we gathered and we still have that drive in us today to hunt and gather. And that's great, you know, when you're, you know, living thousands of years ago, but it's not so helpful when you're in debt and you're looking at the clearance rack at, you know, Macy's or something. <laughs> um, it's still appealing though, because it appeals to our sense of, you know, getting getting the kill, getting the getting the deal, getting the good thing, you know, it, it gives us a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment. Especially if it's the last one on the rack and it's like 80% off, you know, you really that's a rush of endorphins right there, you know, get that dopamine hit. Um, and you have to, you have to really think about that. Um, because I, my problem, one of my weaknesses was thrift stores, thrift shopping. And it's, it's especially hard in thrift stores for me because when you find a really cool thing, it's probably going to be the only one there. You're, there's only going to be one. If you don't get it, somebody else is going to get it. And you it won't be here when you come back. So you have this sense of urgency. I got to get it now or it won't be here. And I'll, mi I'll miss out. You know, I don't want to miss out. I don't want to lose it. So here's here's what you can do. Whatever your weakness is, wh whatever it is. Um, even if it's food, if like say ice cream is your weakness. It doesn't have to be necessarily about buying anything. If you're trying to change the way you eat, same same principle. Go to the place that tempts you the most, whether it's a website, uh, a store, whatever it is. Just go there and go to the section that is most appealing to you. Wh whatever that is, the candles at Bath and Body Works, Bass Pro Shops, you like to look at the fishing stuff. Whatever it is, just go there. And stand there for a minute and look at the things that appeal to you most. Don't touch anything. Just stand there. Just stand in the moment. Just sort of, or if it's a website, open it up and just kind of look at everything. Don't click on anything. Just look. What are you feeling? Think about what you're feeling at that moment. What feelings do you have? It's probably excitement, curiosity, happiness. It's probably not a lot of negative stuff. It's probably very positive. And if you're at a point in your life when you have a lot of negativity around you or stress, it may be very appealing to go somewhere that makes you feel the opposite of that. Um, you know, so for me, if I went into, there are several thrift stores around here that almost always have at least one thing that I really want. So say I'm standing there and I'm looking at this thing and I really want it. I'm going to feel excited, happy, joyful. I'm going to be so glad that I, I'm so glad I came by here today. Oh, I would have missed out on this if I hadn't stopped by here. Ooh, yeah. And then you want to know more about the item. How much is it? Is it on sale? Let me see. Is it my size? Oh, it is. Oh my goodness. Check it. No flaws. Hmm. Nice. So then you have to, de to decide, are you going to get it? Are you going to buy it? Well, in the past, I would just go with the feelings. Oh, I got to buy it. I got to buy that. Especially since it's in the thrift store. It's the only one. If I don't get it, it's not going to be here when I come back. And I will be really, I will regret. I will have regret. And I'll be sad because I let it go and I can't have it now. It's gone. Somebody else got it. I'll never have that item. Darn it. So, it used to be I would just pick it up and get it. Because in the thrift store too, you can rationalize it to yourself. Well, it's not very expensive. You know, I, I want this, I want this coat. With my discount, it's only $8.50 for this coat. That's not a lot. I mean, you can't even get like a, a value meal at McDonald's for that anymore. I need to get this. I gotta have it. I'm gonna get it. But what I have trained myself to do, and it, it takes time, but the more you do it, the easier it's gonna get. I force myself, it's almost like I just invented another voice in my head. I don't literally hear voices in my head. But stop. Think to yourself, stop. Stop. Hold on. Now be honest. And I'm, this is me telling, talking to myself. Now be honest, Mary. 
okay, you're saying it's nice. You like the thing. I agree. It is nice. We can agree that that, that is nice. It's something. It's cool. It's pretty. It's whatever. It is. You're right. Be honest, though. Will you ever wear that? I mean, honestly. And I think back to all of the other items of clothing in my closet that I have purchased over the years because I thought they were cool or pretty or interesting or whatever. I bought them, brought them home, washed them, hung them up, and never wore them. They languished in the closet for a long time and then they went right back to the thrift store where I bought them because I donated them right back, having never worn it. And I know I am not the only one who's done stuff like that. If your weakness is shoes, have you done that with shoes you've bought? Or whatever it is, purses, fishing stuff, I don't know, whatever, bowling balls, I don't know, whatever it is for you, because it's different for everybody. Think about, could you estimate how much money you have wasted on stuff that you bought as an impulse? Because I know I've wasted a lot of money. I have. I'll be honest. I've wasted a lot of money on impulse purchases in my life. I have made a concerted effort to stop doing that. So, and one thing that has helped me so much, and again, the more you do it, the easier it gets. Or that's been my experience. Force yourself to stop. Stop, stop. I know you got all the good feelings going right now, and your your brain is just washed in these good, these good feelings right now. Stop. Stop. Will you ever wear it? Will you ever use it? Whatever it is. Don't you already have enough of those? Don't you, I mean, think about it. Where are you going to put it? And that, that would apply to a lot of things because I see really cool furnitures and decorative items all the time in thrift stores. And that's, my, that's usually my first thought with that. Where would you even put it? You have nowhere to put that. And that's usually enough for me to say, yeah, you're right. You're right. I, we agree that the angel and the devil on my shoulders, we agree that that's a very cool chair. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's, it's a great price. Um, and it's the only one. And yeah, when I come back, it will be gone. Somebody will snap that up. But I, I don't need it. I have nowhere to put it. I have no use for this item. And you have a tinge of sadness. You will. You will. But I'm telling you, the more you do it, the easier it gets. And here's another thought, too, that might make you feel better. And this is what I think when I'm in my thrift shopping. I'm out thrift shopping, you know. And, uh, and I will go sometimes to thrift stores. I will go sometimes to thrift stores just to practice this whole procedure. And I will think that you're leaving that for somebody else to discover that could be a treasure to someone else. And if you buy it, they will never have that good experience. Leave that for somebody else to find. And that's exactly the, the sentence that runs through my mind. Leave that for someone else to find. And I can stand there and appreciate it and go, that is really nice. And walk away. Just walk away. Turn and walk away and leave it. It's hard, but it gets easier I promise. And it's funny too, if you think back, for me, I would think of like, say, I saw a sweater that I really wanted and, and I, I would uh, decide to not get it. I would try the next time I went to the, thr to the thrift store and try to remember what, did, what was it you saw in here last time that you really wanted. Most of the time, I can't even remember. I've already forgotten what it was. So any regret that I felt must not have been too bad because I, I couldn't even tell you what it was I was looking at now. I've already, I've already forgotten it. So it passes. That feeling of regret, the fear of missing out, whatever, it passes. It does, and it passes very quickly. And after a while, you can kind of get it under control. You can get your impulses under control. You can. It's uncomfortable, but over time, it does get easier. You just have to start with whatever it is for you. Um, you can look through your budget and try to figure out like if you if you have different monthly subscriptions, take a good hard look at those because I did. I canceled like three of them that we had that nobody was watching because I talked to my kids. Do you ever watch this stuff? And they said, no, not, not, not really, not anymore. So I canceled them and nobody's missed it. And it saves me, I don't know, 
50 60 dollars a month total on those little subscriptions one thing i forgot to mention and i thought about this as soon as i finished um, if your weakness is a website like say there's some something online that you're a sucker for if they send you email notifications or any other like text notifications or anything about sales or anything like that and that's what suckers you in and gets you to buy things from them turn it off stop those notifications i know it's hard but if that is what is tempting you you need to remove that temptation whatever it is whether they're sending you emails or texts or whatever turn them off unsubscribe do whatever you have to do stop those notifications and it might help you stay away and resist that temptation also it might not hurt to look around to see if there are more cost effective ways to get things that you need like say buying your groceries you might be able to find a less expensive place to buy your groceries that's why most of i buy most of my groceries at aldi i realize that's not an option for a lot of people i save a lot of money every week getting our basics and most of our groceries at aldi you could save money on you might be able to find a way to reduce your cell phone bill you know just little things you might find ways to save money on electricity in your home you could replace light bulbs you know there are all kinds of ways that you can take those es essential expenses and lower them just by making a few changes whether you sh change where you're where you shop your cell phone provider what plans you have in place you could try to get a less expensive plan there are a lot of ways that you could save even if it's just a few dollars a month that adds up if you make a lot of those changes you may really think you're going to miss something but you'd be surprised what you can what you can eliminate and not even really notice um, i think a lot of people you know squander a lot of money every month if they would just go through their budget they could save a lot of money on stuff and not even not even miss it so try to figure out what it is that motivates you to spend money try to you know and if you need to talk to somebody like a therapist or somebody that might help if it's a if it's a really sticky issue for you um, but just try to figure out what where do your habits come from where do your habits originate from um i just got in the habit of going into thrift stores a lot and i found several in the area that are just super duper and you can always you're pretty much guaranteed to find something in there that is really great every time you go and you could go every day and find something great in there um that was a bad habit because i i would buy things and you know it was just they were just impulse purchases and uh and that money adds up you know that's a lot of money i could have saved so one thing i did do was stop going to the thrift store quite so often i don't go anywhere near as much as i used to i've cut my thrift store visits probably by 75 percent over the last year or two i don't go anywhere near as much as i used to and when i do go i practice when i was explaining you know like wait stop yes that's nice that is very nice do you need it don't you already have a sweater that looks almost identical to that yeah you do you don't need another one it's nice let somebody else discover it leave it here for somebody else somebody will come along and go i've been looking for a sweater just like that i'm so glad i came in today i'm going to get that sweater let them enjoy it it's okay you will live the sun will rise again it'll be all right um as far as the money coming in can't really help you too much there i don't know how to tell you to make more money come in and again this is not financial advice or anything like that i don't want to start trying to give you advice on that but um you can i know a lot of people have side hustles you know i've been selling on ebay for over 20 years that's been a great little way to make a little bit of extra money for me and it kind of justified a lot of my trips to the thrift store because I would find stuff in there to sell. And uh, it, especially when my kids were small, it helped pay a lot of bills and put food on my table when my kids were little. It really helped out financially. It was wonderful. And I still do it some just to stay in practice, you know, but I, I don't do as much as I used to. I used to do a lot. But there, there are different ways you can make money on the side, you know, if you need a little extra money coming in. There are plenty of little you know side hustles you can look into like you know driving for uber or instacart or whatever i mean but it depends on what you want to do you may not want to do any of that 
But that's really something that you'll have to look into on your own. I'm not a really good resource for that kind of stuff. Uh, eBay is always just kind of in my thing. But because um, I, I did discover I have a bit of a knack for I've always kind of had an eye for for weird things, you know, things uh, th things just kind of stand out to me in thrift stores and I have an eye for things that sell well and I've learned over the years things that sell well and you know I, I make I make a extra money every month just to going into thrift stores and finding things to sell on eBay yeah I've been doing it I started doing that in 1999 and I've done it ever since so 20 this is my 24th year of it so I just took my talent for having an eye for the unusual and put it into making money on eBay. <laughs> so a lot of times though, you can really, if you, like if you have a lot of debt, um, and that, that was the person who messaged me, sent me an email, that was their problem was, you know, I have I have a lot of debt and I'm really starting to panic. Rule number one, as they said in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is don't panic. Don't panic. Panic never solved any problems. I know it can be a natural response to a stressful situation. Panic, panic is not going to solve your problem. So try not to panic. Take a deep breath. And part of the way you can sort of diffuse that panic is by knowing exactly what you're dealing with. And that is why you need to know exactly what your budget looks like every month. You need to know where your money is going every month. You need to keep track of how are you spending your money? You know, you could take a couple of weeks and write down every expenditure you have. And again, I'm a big fan of pencil, pen and paper. I, I want to write it. I want to see it on paper. There's something just a little bit more personal about that. Just take a notebook and write it down and look at it. That way you are forced to physically write it down and you are forced to look at it. Just for me, there's something about that that hits home a little more than a screen. You know, you know? Maybe it doesn't matter for you, but it does for me. Just try it. All it's going to cost you is a little time and a piece of paper and a writing utensil. Um, write down every every penny you spend. And, and this, I know I've given this advice before, but I, I think it's very important and it's not fun. You will not enjoy it, but it can help you kind of figure out where your money is going. If you're sitting here like, I get paid. I don't know where my paycheck goes. Well, if you write everything down, you're going to know where your paycheck is going. Everything you buy. I don't care if you buy a soda out of a drink machine. Write that down. If you stop by the drive through write down how much did you spend. Write that down. Did you give some money to the, the Girl Scouts for some cookies? Write that down. Whatever. Put it all down. Whether you paid cash or credit card, debit card, whatever. Put it down all together and at the, the end of your two weeks or four weeks or whatever you do total that up and see how much money that is you may be surprised it's probably a lot more than you thought it would be um and i, I know i went through that when i <laughs> when i first started working from home exclusively working from home that was in september of uh, 2000 oh no i'm sorry 2020 at this Somehow I, my brain cannot process the fact that we are past 2020. I'm still thinking like 2000 was two years ago. I don't know why. 2020. And I started gaining weight. And I couldn't figure out why. Because I was working out more. I had joined this outdoor boot camp class. I was working out, you know, pretty intense workouts. And I'm going, how am I, how am I gaining weight? I don't understand. Well... I tried the Noom app, and I, they don't sponsor me. This is just, I'm just telling you what I did. So I thought, I'm going to try the Noom app to see if I can figure out what's going on. Because I really didn't know. And uh, so with the Noom app, you have to keep track of every calorie you consume. Even if it is one potato chip, you have to put it down. And you keep track of it. You have to log your calories every day. And I figured out by lunchtime the first day what was going on. I was working at home, you know, had my little home office set up. And I'm just mindless. My problem was mindless snacking while working. Like I'd have some pretzels there or whatever. Because my, my home office was set up right in the corner of the kitchen. I'm just steps away from all the food. It's all there all day. So I realized, okay, I think I found the problem because I used up my calorie allotment before lunchtime. Like, oh, okay. And it can be hard to accept like, oh, 
Like if you're talking about your money, oh, that's where my money's going. Yikes. Okay, but now you know. Now you know. So what you do now is you have to change your behavior. You got to change your patterns. Got to change your habits. And you're not going to change them overnight. It's it's not going to be that simple um, for me. I had to stop the mindless snacking and I changed my snacks. I swapped out some of, you know, like chips for an apple or a glass of water or something like that. And I lost all the weight I had gained and then some. And it was, it was, you know, and it was just little changes that I made to my everyday habits that allowed me to do that. I didn't work out more. I didn't change anything else. All I did was change my eating habits and I had all the weight came off and then some. So it was... It was really, it was incredible. It was just, wow, it's just a, amazing to see the difference it made. So it, it takes a lot of little changes. But you can't really get started, in my opinion. You can't make any meaningful changes until you, you need to know what you need to change and why you need to change it. You know, what, what got me to this point? I need to know that. And you also need to take responsibility for it. You know, like uh, the 12-step program, like, Al, you know, AA, you know, they have the 12-step thing. Um, I th- and I don't know a lot about it, but I think part of it is accepting responsibility for your actions. Like, I did this. I have to be, I'm going to be the one to change it. It starts with me. You know, I'm not going to blame my job. I'm not going to sit here and say they need to pay me more. I'm not going to blame my parents like you should have raised me better. You're an adult now. Maybe so, but you got to let that go. Your childhood is over. It is now time to look at it, say, okay, well, here's what I learned there. That was not very helpful. In fact, that was harmful for my money expenditures or whatever, whatever. But I'm an adult now and I can change. I can make changes and I can make my life going forward better. Whatever it is, whether it's money or your diet or whatever it is. Um, Habits. It's all habits. It's all habits that we get into and they just become comfortable to us. And it's very hard to be uncomfortable. We don't like, I don't like being uncomfortable. I don't think anybody does. But if you want to change, you're going to have to be uncomfortable. You're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to do things differently than you've been doing them up to this point. You're at this point. Do you want everything going forward to look like that back there? Or do you want it to look different? If you want it to look different, you're going to have to be different. You're going to have to do different things. Blame. You know, it's, you know what's comfortable? blaming external forces for your issue. That's comfortable because that means you don't have to change. That means you don't have to take any action and you can continue being comfortable. All blame is going to do is keep you in the past and going forward, your life is not going to get any better. Making excuses and laying blame will not fix your life. They may make you feel better, but it's not going to, it's not going to change anything. So I would not recommend that. I would not recommend pointing fingers unless you're pointing it at yourself because more than likely, whatever your situation is, you had something to do with it because of the choices you have made. For whatever reason you made those choices, I I can't say, but for whatever reason, you made choices that led to where you are right now. Now, I know there can be external issues. Um, I've dealt with that too when my kids were small. I had significant medical bills from the birth of my younger son. I had insurance, but there was a lot I had to pay for out of pocket myself. I had some other expenses. I had some legal expenses from some issues I had to deal with. Um, it's not like I had a lot of debt because I went on a wild shopping spree or anything like that. I had, I know what it's like to sit here and say, you know, well, my debt is because of medical stuff or legal stuff. Or I get it. I've been there. But that, that may not be your fault. That may have been unavoidable. But what are you going to do about it? That's what you have to look in the mirror and ask yourself, what, what are you going to do about it? Um, so I, I lived on a shoestring budget for a long time. I sold stuff on eBay to make extra money. 
I tried to do whatever I could to keep my expenses low, but still take care of my kids and myself, like, you know, make sure we had everything we needed. But we didn't have a lot of extra stuff. We didn't have any fancy stuff, but we had what we needed. And I took every bit of extra money I had and put it toward paying off my debt. Even if it was just $10, $20, it went to my debt. And how do you eat a whale? You know how you eat a whale? One bite at a time. That's how you do it. You can look at your debt as a whale. Now, it's scary to look at it all at once. I know, because when I'm looking at my, you know, back then, I'm thinking about my debt. It was scary. Like, that's a lot of debt, you know. I know. It is. You're right. And I had to work out a payment plan for my medical debt. Like, here's how much I can afford to pay. If I can pay extra, I will. But here's, I will pay this minimum amount every month. And I did. I kept my payments up. Um, we did not go out to eat. We did not take fancy trips. We didn't do really much of anything beyond the basic stuff we had to do. And I ate that whale one bite at a time. And it took a long time. It took a number of years to pay off all that debt. You're not, whether you're trying to you know, lose weight or pay off debt, whatever your goal is, like you want to run a marathon. You can't just run outside of your house right now and run that far. You'll die. I would die. I, if I had to run a 5K, I would probably die at this point because I don't like to run. And my, well, my knee is messed up. I will use my knee as an excuse. My right knee is a little, it's a little unhappy with me right now. You, it's okay. Don't panic. Okay, it, it can be big, whatever your goal is. It can be big and it can be scary. You can do it. I know you can do it. If I can do it, I know you can. Now, I did have the advantage of growing up with parents who taught me how to budget my money, be patient, keep your priorities in order, you know, pay your bills first. And then if you have a little bit of money left over, I would recommend putting it in savings because you're, you're going to need a rainy day budget because, you know, life happens, emergencies happen. You might need money to get your car fixed or for something else. I don't know, but I always try to keep a little bit of money set aside for emergencies so I don't have to put it on a credit card or something like that. I didn't always have that, though. There were plenty of times in my life when I had no savings at all. But you look at that whale and look at it. You have to acknowledge it. Yeah, there it is. That's how big it is. Here's how much it is. Here's what I got to do. All right. What are you going to do about it? Every month, you're going to take a bite out of that whale. And you're going to keep doing that until the whale is gone. You've, you've eaten that whole thing. And you will not believe how proud of yourself you're going to be when you finally do. You may have setbacks along the way. I did. You may have stuff come up. Oh, God, here's another thing. I got to pay for this, too. You know, okay. All right, some of the whale that I ate, it got a little bigger, okay. I'm going to keep eating that whale. I'm going to keep taking a bite every day. And one day that whale is going to be gone. And one day it finally was. I still remember the last, the last payment I had to make. I wanted to go out and celebrate. I didn't, but I wanted to go out and celebrate. But I didn't because I had gotten in the habit of not doing stuff like that. So I just stayed home and watched a movie on TV. <laughs> Made some microwave popcorn. That was my celebration for eating that whole damn whale. You learn to live a simpler life. And I think in the coming years, more people are going to have to learn to live simply. And that's going to be really hard for some people. It's, it's all about humbling yourself and realizing that a lot of that extra stuff, you know, once you don't have it anymore, you don't really miss it anyway. It's a lot of stuff I could be doing, a lot of fancy whatever. I have no desire to do it. I don't want why. I'm happy. My life is pretty simple. I'm happy with it the way it is. Um, but I, I do. I did want to just take a, a little bit of time today and make this video. I don't have my little cards, so I probably forgot 50 different things I wanted to tell you. But um, I wanted to let you know, too, if you're dealing with debt and stress, and spending habit issues. You are not alone. I think there are tons of people out there in your situation. They may not talk about it, but I think a lot of people are dealing with that right now. People who have had a spending problem for years, 
but they could kind of hide it like just they just keep charging it charging it and racking up debt but they're about at a point where they really can't do that anymore you know the debt just becomes too much um, and eventually you have to face it you just have to face your demons address them figure out how to solve the problem and then go for it you just have to start taking bites out of that whale and figure out, figuring out ways to take bigger bites out of the whale when you can by eliminating unnecessary expenses and expenditures in your monthly spending pattern. But you can do it. You can absolutely do it. One step at a time, one day at a time. Don't worry about the whole thing right now. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. It is a long thing. It is a long process. You know, it's not going to happen right away. Whatever that whale is for you, you didn't build it up in a day. You're not going to eat it in a day. You got to be patient with yourself. You, you do. You have to be patient. Don't be hard on yourself. Don't beat up on yourself. You know, that was the past. This is a new point. This is a new day. Yeah, you made, if you see it now. Like, I made all these bad choices. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Don't continue to beat yourself up. Just make different choices going forward. I Like I say, I like to make new mistakes every day. You know, I don't want to keep making the same mistake over and over and over. And you don't have to either. You can make all new mistakes every day. I try to learn something from my mistakes. You know, if I, if I make a bad choice, okay, what can I learn from that? Well, if nothing else, I've learned I don't want to make that mistake again. That was, that was a bad choice. That didn't work out. I'm not going to do that again. And try to be easy on yourself, but don't make excuses for yourself. It's a fine line. Like, you don't want to excuse bad behavior, but you also don't want to ruminate on it for too long. And you can do it. You can do it. I know you can. And you're not alone, like I was saying. I think there are millions of people in the same boat, so you are not the only one. Don't feel like you're some kind of weirdo and you're a failure. You're not a failure. If you're still alive, you can change. You can make changes. As long as you're still breathing and you're waking up every day, you can change. Whatever it is you want to change. And whether it has nothing, it may have nothing to do with money. Maybe there's something else you want to change about yourself or your situation. As long as you are living, it is not too late to start. You can always start. As I've said before, my mom went back to, she went to graduate school and got her master's in psychology at the age of 70. You can do it. It is not ever too late as long as you are still breathing. So that is what I had to say. I, I hope it was helpful to someone. I especially hope it was helpful to the person who emailed me. Um, you are definitely in my thoughts. I know how hard it is to struggle and how stressful it can be. Um, there really is no easy fix, though. I wish I could give you a magic formula, you know, that you could just use or a magic wand that you could just wave and make it go away, but it doesn't work that way. You are just going to have to be in it for the long haul. You have to commit to big changes in your life. And there's probably not going to be anybody there to make you stick to it and hold you accountable. You're going to have to hold yourself accountable. You're going to have to answer to yourself. That is another thing about being a grown-up. You just you have to be your own motivator, your own disciplinarian, and your own cheerleader sometimes. Nobody is going to come along and follow up with you on any of it. Um, you're just going to have to do it yourself. It's, it's not fun. A lot of it is not fun. And it can be a lonely endeavor, but I promise you it's worth it. It is so worth it when you get to the end and that weight is just lifted off of you, like that bur that financial burden or whatever it is, is just lifted off of you. It is so worth every bit of it. And you're going to learn a lot of really valuable stuff in the process that you can use going forward to hopefully not end up in that situation again. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope this was helpful to somebody. I, I just I couldn't get this off my mind all day. And I kept thinking, you just sit down and talk about it for a minute, you know? So I wanted to do that before the day was over because it's just, I just really felt bled somehow to do it. So I felt like I really had to do it. And thank you so much for being here. I really hope that you have a wonderful day and I'll see you again soon.